Good morning. Um, welcome to my fifth grade classroom at Glenlee Elementary School. My name is Mr. Neal, and today we are using a text to draw conclusions. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Neal. If you would take out your reading and writing notebook, you're going to copy the first I can statement. This is not our first time seeing this. As you are writing the first I can statement, I need three volunteers to read it nice and loud, please. I'm gonna go Brayden, I'm gonna go Kadara, I'm gonna go Sanaya. Very good. I can support my conclusion using the text along with what I already know. As soon as you have that written down, you're going to Schoology, you're going to Courses, you're going to November Materials, you're going to open two links, Chapter 1 of Out of My Mind, the text, and Chapter 1, Out of My Mind, the activity. It's a document that you can edit and type in. All right, Chapter 1. Are we there? All right, quick, quick, quick. If you don't have that I can't statement written down by now, you can get it from a friend. Get to Chapter 1, please. The actual text. Mm -hmm. All right. Words. I'm surrounded by thousands of words, maybe millions. Are we there? Cathedral. Repeat after me. Cathedral. Cathedral. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Mississippi. 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 Neapolitan. Neapolitan. Hippopotamus. 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 Silky. Silky. Terrifying. 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 Iridescent. Iridescent. Tickle. 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 Sneeze. Sneeze. Wish. 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 Worry. Worry. Words have always swirled around me like snowflakes, each one delicate and different, each one melting untouched in my hands. Deep within me, world, words pile up in huge drifts, mountains of phrases and sentences and connected ideas, clever expressions, jokes, love songs. We said the signpost was again and again the other day, right? Yeah. Why do we say the signpost was again and again? Marcel? Right, and what question do we ask for the signpost again and again? Come on. We ask. Why does this keep showing up again and again? So why does the term words keep showing up again and again? By the end of the page, we should be able to answer that. Every word my parents spoke to me or about me, as in the text, I absorbed and kept and remembered, all of them. I have no idea how I untangled the complicated process of words and thought, but it happened quickly and naturally. And by the time I was two, all my memories had words and all my words had meanings. But only in my head, there's that contrast. I have never spoken one single word. I am almost 11 years old. So why was words used again and again? Amira? Because she never spoke a single time. Because she's never spoken. And that is a big idea to the story, right? And it leaves us wondering what, class? All together, what? Wow, yeah, right. Exactly. 
Chapter two. I can't talk, I can't walk, I can't feed myself or take myself to the bathroom. Big bummer. My arms and hands are pretty stiff, but I can mash the buttons on the TV remote and move my wheelchair with the help of knobs that I can grab on the wheels. I can't hold a spoon or a pencil without dropping it. And my balance is like zip. Humpty Dumpty had more control than I do. And when people look at me, I guess they see a girl with short, dark, curly hair strapped into a pink wheelchair. By the way, there is nothing cute about a pink wheelchair. Pink doesn't change a thing. Signpost. Contrast and contradiction. Somebody give me some evidence. Why is that contrast and contradiction? William. In her eyes, she's still in the wheelchair. She's still the girl in the wheelchair, right? But we gave you a pink wheelchair. Right? They'd see a girl, eyes in the text. They'd see a girl with dark brown eyes that are full of curiosity, but one of them is slightly out of whack. Her head wobbles a little. Sometimes she drools. She's really tiny for a girl who is aged 10 and 3 quarters. Her legs are very thin, probably because they've never been used. Eyes in your text. Her body tends to move on its own agenda, with feet sometimes kicking out unexpectedly and arms occasionally flailing. Class, say flailing. flailing. This is flailing, not failing, but flailing. flailing. Say flailing. flailing. Connecting with whatever is close by, a stack of CDs, a bowl of soup, a vase of roses. Not a whole lot of control there. After folks got finished making a list of my problems, they, make, they might take time to notice that I have a fairly nice smile and deep dimples. I think my dimples are cool. I wear tiny gold earrings. Sometimes people never even ask my name like it's not important or something. It is. My name is Melody. I can remember way back to when I was really, really young. Of course, it's hard to separate real memories from videos of me that dad took on his camcorder. I've watched those things a million times. Mom bringing me home from the hospital. Her face showing smiles, but her eyes squinted with worry. Melody touched, uh, tucked a, into a tiny baby bathtub. My arms and legs looked so skinny. I didn't splash a kick. Turn and talk. There's a, another signpost. They're all up here on the board. Um, turn and talk about what signpost we are experiencing right now, or our character is. Talk about it. I think that the um, Give signpost Give is like, I think we have the yeah, because I think we have the climate. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, I think um she I don't think she was the one, the one who really splashed her kick on that. Check it in. Talk to us. Give us the signpost, fiction signpost, and give us evidence. Um, Jaden. Extreme language. Prove it. We don't believe you. Because she said the video that she watched on her dad's camp camcorder, she watched it a million times. A million times. Okay, we do believe you. You had evidence. All right? All right. Um, talk to us. Zaylin. According to the text, I love your language. You make me believe you, sir. All right, jumping back in. Melody propped with blankets on the living room sofa. A look of contentment on my face. Class, say contentment. contentment. To be content, say content. content. It's like to be satisfied. I never cried much when I was a baby. Mom swears it's true. Mom massaging me with lotion after a bath. I can still smell the lavender, then wrapping me in a fluffy towel with a little hood built into one corner. 
Have you ever seen one of those before? Yeah, yes, or like the little babies? Dad took videos of me getting fed, getting changed, and even me sleeping. As I got older, I guess he was waiting for me to turn over and sit up and walk. I never did. But I did absorb everything. I began to recognize noises and smells and tastes, the woof and whoosh of the furnace coming alive each morning, the tangy odor of heated dust as the house warmed up, the feel of a sneeze in the back of my throat. In music, songs floated through me and stayed. Lullabies mixed with the soft smells of bedtime slept with me. Harmonies made me smile. It's like I've always had a painted musical soundtrack playing background to my life. I can almost hear colors and smell images when music is played. It's pretty powerful language. Mom loves classical. Big, booming Beethoven symphonies blast from her CD player all day long. Those pieces always seem to be bright blue as I listen, and they smell like fresh paint. Dad is partial. Say partial. Partial. What root word do you see in the word partial? Come on. Part. Part. So it's like part of. You like it a lot if you're partial to something. Dad is partial to jazz, and every chance he gets, eyes and text, he winks at me takes out mom's Mozart disc, then pops in the CD of Miles Davis or Woody Herman. Jazz to me sounds brown and tan, and it smells like wet dirt. Jazz music drives mom crazy, which is probably why dad puts it on. Can you go to the text and find a phrase that says, or that supports that she's not a fan of jazz music? Because according to the text- All right, you're using my language. According to the text, she says that it sounds brown and tan and it smells like wet dirt. All right. And what page is that? And that is page... Six. Six. Page six. All right. And what does it say exactly, word for word? It sounds, smells, it smells like wet dirt. And in my experience, because this is what we do when we, when we make inferences, we take what we read with what we already know, we put them together to make an educated guess. In my experience, I wouldn't connect wet dirt with something positive. You with me on that one? Yeah. Right? So I'm going to conclude, according to the text on page six, when she says it smells like wet dirt, that she's not a fan of jazz music. Is there anything else that supports that she's not a fan of jazz music? Romel. Okay, so Romel concludes that Melody is not a fan of jazz. He respectfully disagrees with Tiana because he thinks that he has a stronger piece of evidence. Also on page six, it says what, Romel? It says that jazz music is I respectfully agree with you both. And I think both pieces of evidence support this conclusion. And Isaac's with me on that. Is there any other evidence in the text that supports this conclusion? So far, we've had two pieces of evidence. Amira. Is 
It says what? Jazz music sounds brown and tan. And those are kind of dull colors, not like bright, vivid colors, right? And is that also on page six? Notice, though, how I am citing my evidence and organizing my evidence. On one side, I write my conclusion. On the other side, I write where I found my evidence and my actual evidence. I could have done this backward. I could write evidence and then write what? Well, my conclusion, right? When you take your assessment, that's kind of what it's going to look like. Well, you're going to have times where you write, actually today, you're going to have, your task is going to be to write evidence and then to work backward and write conclusion. So it's going to look like this. On one side, it's going to say conclusion, eyes this way, eyes this way. On one side, it's going to say conclusion. On the other side, it's going to say text evidence. There are going to be some spots where they give you the conclusion and then you enter the text evidence like you did just now with me. And then there's going to be another spot where they give you the text evidence and you have to make the conclusion based on the evidence. I want to make sure everybody has that pulled up. And as soon as you put it in edit mode, you may begin. Checking in. Have a um, turn and talk and have a quick conversation um, about a conclusion that you've drawn or text evidence that you found since reading independently. Turn and talk, go. It says, um, when this one says, my parents have always liked me with, I'm gonna me with this conversation. Dad is trying to take your ass. Talk to us, whole class. What was a piece of evidence that you found or a conclusion that you've drawn? Um, let's start with Sanaya, then we're gonna jump up to Will. Um, the one where, always well, when she said, she is intelligent. What me and what me and Mia read was that like she knows a lot of things, like she knows words and stuff, but she just she doesn't tell people and she cause she doesn't talk. Thank you for joining our class. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on drawing conclusions and finding textual evidence. I like my A in front of my E, in front of my A, in front of my L, in front of my L. I like my Neville fan.